Hello everyone, this is David Godibadze from Mighty Solutions Network and in today's video I'm going to show you step by step how to configure side-to-side -side IPsec VPN between Cisco Router and Unify Router, in this case UCG Ultra, but it will be the same for other Unify Routers. In my case, I have this and this is what we are going to configure between Cisco and Unify Router. So I'm going to start configuring the Unify router first, and then I'll show you how to configure step-by-step step the Cisco side. First of all, let's review what do we have in the configuration. We have phase one VPN configuration, which is important because that's where after building the phase one VPN, our pressured key is going to be exchanged within that tunnel, and then we can build the phase two. This will be automatically once we configure. The Cisco side is this network, 192.168.0.0/24, and the Unify side is this network, 10.1.1.0/24. And as you can see, on the Unify side, I'll click Settings, then VPN, Side-to-Side -side VPN. And since I don't have any Side-to-Side -side VPN configured yet, this is asking me to configure something even without clicking the Create New VPN. And we are going to start configuring. Let's make sure we click IPsec and name it Cisco VPN or VPN to Cisco. Cisco. Now, pre-shared key. I'm going to use something really easy. Your secret key here. Please do not use this secret key in your production and do not use something like this simple. Then our local IP is this. 12.34.51.100 and let's configure the remote side. This on the left side is the Cisco. If I do show IP interface brief on the Cisco CLI privilege mode, I will see IP addresses of all the interfaces. In my case, Gigabit Ethernet 1 is the outside interface, the ISP side interface. So this is the IP we are going to use on the Unify network, on the Unify configuration, should I say. This will be the pure IP, remote IP. So to whatever VPN device we are trying to connect this Unify, that device's outside IP is going to be here. Then we switch to the policy-based VPN. Now, policy-based VPN means that the VPN is between networks. So on the route-based, you're building the tunnel with the interface, and then you route anything you want within. But the policy based is that we're saying, let's build a VPN between these two networks here, Acme Corporation and uh, Partner Vendor, for example. And now remote network. Remote network is going to be 192.168.0.0/24. Let's click Add here and the switch the advanced option to manual and configure everything one by one. First, let's see what do we have in the VPN. This is what we want to configure. Let me copy and paste on the notepad actually. Okay, perfect. Now, first of all, key exchange, version one. Do we have version one? Yes. Next one is Pressured key. Yes, we have pressured key. Here it is. Then main or aggressive mode. Now the aggressive mode is not supported by Unify. So here it's going to be automatically main mode. Then Defi Hellman group is group one for the phase one, for the IIC. So that will be here, group one. You can choose whatever group you want, but it has to be the same as the other side of the VPN device. Then we have encryption algorithm AAS-128. This is what we have. Then we have hashing algorithm SHA-1. Yes, we have SHA-1. And lifetime is eight hours. This is what we have. Not traversal. Unify doesn't support that, so it's going to be disabled. And that period detection also is not supported by Unify. So you have to disable both of them on the Cisco side which is disabled by default, so you don't have to worry about that. Let's go into the phase two, which is the ESP in our case. Encryption algorithm is AES-128 AES again. Hashing algorithm in this case is gonna be MD5. 
PFS is enabled, and yes, we have enabled this by default. Group is group 1. Strange, I thought group is 14. Hmm, it's group 1, okay, it really doesn't matter. And then we have lifetime, it's gonna be 8 hours again. And IPsec model is tunnel or transport. Now, Unify again doesn't support transport, so it's going to be tunnel by default. And compression is not supported by Unify, so it's going to be disabled by default. And we have to, we don't have to enable that on the Cisco side as well. Now, since this is ready, we're going to click Add and let's go and configure the Cisco side now using the same parameters. Now, on the Cisco side, we have to create phase one configuration first. We're going to do configure terminal. This will bring us into the configuration mode. Before, we were into enable mode where we can do show commands to see what's the status of the device or what's the configuration. But here is the specifically configuration mode. For phase one, we are going to do crypto, ISACAMP policy. And uh, I'm going to do it 10. Now, what is this 10? On the Cisco world, you can have Ike version, phase one configuration, multiple phase one configuration, and none of them is attached by default or in any way to the phase two. So you can have phase one, one phase one configuration, only one, which will support and serve all the phase two configuration on the Cisco device if it matches. Now, we have to match these settings in the phase one, so that the phase one VPN is brought up and the pressured key can be exchanged within that. And this is how we start. Cisco, in the Cisco world, we do crypto ISAC and policy 10. And we have to make sure that this 10 is not being used. If it's used, we are going to override the actual configuration and we don't want that. Now let's type encryption. Encryption, AAS, what do we have here? 128. So question mark to show what are our options and 128 is our option. Then authentication method is pressured key. On the Unify, that's by default. On a Cisco, you have to tell that. So authentication question mark, and this is what we want to use. Pressured key. Then let's do the defi Hanman group. That would be group. And in our case, it's one because that's what we did here on, and also on the Unify side. And the hash algorithm is going to be SHA1, which is this one, okay? And then do SHA here, and then lifetime is going to be eight hours, right? 2,800 seconds. Then not traversal is not enabled. Let's see, what do we have here? So lifetime we did, dead pre-detection is def uh, disabled by default, not traversal is disabled, so by default, all this is configured and actually on the Cisco side, by default, it's the main mode. Now let's exit from here and the next one is, let's do the pressure key. Now, remember on a, on a Unify, we told that this is the pressure key. We didn't tell this to the Cisco yet, so let's do that. On a Cisco is going to be crypto, ISACAMP, key, and then our actual key, address, and to which address we want this key to be used. On the Unify address, this is the IP address we have on the outside interface, on the WAN interface, so I'm going to put that IP address. Missing some letters here. Let's fix that. Then we have to configure the transform set for Cisco to apply this configuration to the phase two. Now the transform set will include this configuration from the ESP in a single line. And that line is kind of a container of these configurations, which we can apply to the crypto map, which serves the phase two. Let's do that. Crypto IPsec transform set and I'm going to name this as TS set. Let's see what 
configuration we have to apply here. First of all, our ESP is going to be ESP. Then here, encryption, you see it's 128. So ESP, AAS, AES, right? So uh, question mark and our guy is AES. And then we have 128. So I'm gonna do 128 here. And this part is already here. Now let's do this MD5 as well. Question mark and DSP MD5 HMAC. Now this transform set includes both configuration. This MD5 hashing algorithm and encryption algorithm. And if we check how this looks like to show run include, you will see that we have ESP128 and MD5 HMAC. Now 128, it could be a default and that's why we don't see that. Once you are in the transform set, you also have to enable the tunnel mode. Question mark here and mode tunnel, not the transport and exit. Okay, so far we have configured the Crypto ISA camp is on. Let me show you that. Crypto ISA camp. No, not, not include. Sorry. Let's do this section. This is what we configured so far. And then we have the key. And then also we do, we do have the transform set. Okay. Here is the guy. Now it's time to configure the crypto map. Map. I'm going to name it Unify VPN. Then it's going to be first crypto map. So I'm going to use number 10, IPsec, Isacamp. That's how it starts. Now, this again is just a name. You can name it whatever you want. And this is the number. You can have multiple crypto map policies and you number them which one will be checked first or, you know, just to differentiate between each other. So it's going to be number 10. I didn't have any crypto map before, and I can use that. Then I'm going to set the peer. Set peer. And here we are going to use unify outside interface IP address. 12.34.51.100. Then I'm going to set transform set, which is this guy here, right? This is the transform set. And I also need to use the access list, which I haven't created it, but I'll still add it. Address access list VPN. Now this access list is not created yet. So I'm going to have to create that. On a Cisco world, we call access list anytime we want to match the traffic because that's what they use, this access list. So I'm gonna 10 permit, I'm going to number this access list line, permit IP 192.168.0.0 slash 24 and 10.1.1.0 slash 24 again. Now, this means, hmm, okay, now this access list means that the you know, I have two access lists here and this will confuse us. So let me delete this guy here. Okay. Now this is the access list we want to use on the crypto map to match the traffic. Basically, we're telling that if this traffic goes to this traffic, that's our interesting traffic for VPN. So let's do show run section crypto map. And this is the phase two configuration. We have pure IP address. We have transform set with this guy here. With this guy. And then we have the access to match the interesting traffic. What's left now is to enable this crypto map on the egress interface, on the outside interface. So I'm going to do show gigabit two. That is our, oh, that's internal interface. Here, this is the outside interface. So configure terminal. I'm gonna enter into this interface and click enter. 
and I'll do crypto map and then crypto map name. In our case, that is Unify VPN. Okay, and enter. Okay, now the VPN configuration on Cisco side is done. Let's do show crypto yeah, Isaac and Sa to see what's going on on the phase one. And it looks like phase one is up and running. Let's refresh the VPN configuration page on the Unify and let's generate the traffic. On the Cisco side, we can ping this guy to generate traffic from the Unify. This Windows is on the Unify network, on this network. So I'm going to just go ahead and ping the Cisco side to generate the traffic for VPN. And as you can see, I can ping it. Now let's do show crypto IPsec security association. And here where we see that the VPN is working, if you run this command, IPsec security association, you will see that the local subnet is this guy, remote subnet is this guy, right? Then this is the peer IP address of the Unify. So if I go internet, this is the IP address of the UCG Ultra when IP address, right? And then we see that four packets were encapsulated, four packets were decapsulated. Why? Because we sent four ping. So if I send, repeat, no, if I send two more packets, see two only, not more, we will have six here unless something else also was transporting through the VPN. Okay, six, right? And then six packets were encrypted, decrypted, and verified. All good, right? What I like to do here, if I have many, many VPNs, I'll do pipe, then include, and I do ident to see which networks I'm seeing on the VPN, and then packets. That way, I'm seeing only what I want to see in this case, between which subnets, and if the encapsulation, decapsulation, encryption works. That's it. This is how you build a VPN between Cisco router and Unify router. The VPN is working. It's going to be online here if you refresh the page. And also from Cisco side, you, you can actually ping the Unify as well. Let's see what can we ping on the Unify. Can we ping this IP address of the Windows computer? Let's try. Ping 10.1.1. .1 .1. 176 and our source IP is going to be 192.0, not dot zero, 168.0.1. And yes, we were able to ping. If you repeat this command, we will see these five pings added to the six, so it's going to be 11, right? Let's do that. And this is how we know that, that our traffic is actually going through the VPN, even if there's any other route. In this case, it's going through the VPN. Thanks for watching it. Put the questions in the comments. Thank you again.